Predatory mites, despite their earned reputation as effective predators of many pest species, are not always impervious to their prey. In fact, it is well documented that the eggs of several species of predatory mites are attacked by thrips and even spider mites, sometimes to great detriment of the predatory mite population. For this reason, many predatory mites have developed a sensitivity to volatile chemicals produced by prey, and this detection dictates both where individuals travel to oviposit as well as feed. For example, Amblyceus degenerans is a type 4 generalist, for which pollen is a main source of food, a food source they share with their prey, like Franklinella occidentalis, the western flower thrips. This species often feeds on pollen inside of flowers, but they never lay their eggs in them. In the absence of thrips, they may oviposit close to patches of pollen that fall from flowers in order to give their progeny quick access to food. Western flower thrips and other species exude two alarm compounds, desilacetate and dodesilacetate which are detected by predatory mites like Amblyceus degenerans and informs them of their presence. In the presence of thrips and this compound, degenerans cease ovipositing close to the food source they share with thrips and instead seek domatia with a preference for dendric trichomes. They lay eggs in clusters, preferring to lay all their eggs in the same domatia, but will lay eggs in domatia occupied by other degenerans over open space. Because this species only develops one egg at a time, they must commute between prey, pollen, and oviposition sites constantly. Western flower thrips destroy predatory mite eggs they come into contact with, dictating this avoidance behavior. In fact, western flower thrips are opportunist omnivores that will feed on the eggs of Tetranicus urticae, the two-spotted spider mite, just as easily as they feed on plant tissues. However, the webbing that spider mites produce impacts this predation greatly, and it is often easier for them to feed on plant hosts instead. Neocellulus barkeri and Neocellulus cucumerus are both type 3e mites, meaning they are generalists that specialize in soil or leaf litter habitats. They are both common biocontrol agents of thrips tabasi, the onion thrips, but this prey utilizes another counterattack, repellent. When disturbed, onion thrips thrash their bodies and produce a repellent droplet of liquid which they will adhere to the threat. Both barkeri and cucumerous mites immediately withdraw when exposed to the substance and commence hygienic care. Due to this effective tactic, combined with their increased weight and stronger cuticle, Second instar onion thrips are more defensible, and most successful attacks require targeting their vulnerable thorax by predator mites. Eggs and first instar onion thrips are much more vulnerable, and a scarcity of their forms may force barkeri, cucumeris, and other predator mites to seek alternative food sources. Typhlodromus bambusae is a type 1b predatory mite that preys specifically on Schizotetranicus salarius, the bamboo mite. When the adults invade the nests of their prey, they are often effective at feeding on or chasing away adults and nymphal stages and oviposit at the nest site. The adult males of a special long seedy form of the bamboo mite have been documented as highly aggressive and effective at killing non-adult stages of Typhlodromus bambusae, except for their eggs, which are never attacked. Since nymphal predator stages are ill-equipped to attack adult prey successfully, they usually focus on other nymphal prey, or disperse from the nest if they aren't killed outright. Interestingly, although adult male bamboo mites are more successful at counterattacking predators than adult females, males and females in combination are most successful, implying a potential biparental care strategy or similar collaborative effect which increases the survival of progeny. Ecology is complex. Necessarily, this makes the intricacies of biocontrol complex as well. At the research level, these intricacies influence which biocontrol agents are fundamentally more suitable for certain pests, at what rate they should be deployed, and novel strategies for the supplementation of their efficacy. These bionomic parameters can be highly mutable and dependent on circumstance increasing their complexity and ultimately form a more complete picture of the cultivation space.